What's up guys, today we're going to be going over how to create a custom data set that you can use to fine tune GPT Neo. As I've gone over in a previous video, what makes these larger language models so nice is that they're more able to learn from a smaller data set and perform better when given less data. But in order to use these language models, we first need to get the data in a proper format. So that's what we'll be doing. For today's video, I'm going to be building a custom data set from the quotes data set located on Kaggle. Looking at Kaggle, we can see that this data set is a big collection of quotes with their authors, category, tags, and their popularity. So immediately, there's many things apparent that we can do with this data set. For this video, what I plan on making is an AI quote generator when it's given a category. For example, here would be an example of the input. I would give it something like love or another category followed by a colon and then the AI will generate all the text here. First, let's download the data set, take a closer look, and then prepare the data into a format for GPT-Neo. I've already downloaded the data set, but if you want to follow along, be sure to click download here. Once you download the data set, you'll get a file called quotes.zip, which inside of that file is quotes.json. This contains all the quotes and data we'll be using. Here we have opened up quotes.json and VS Code. Looking at the file, we can see the structure. Here we see the quote, and here we see the category. These are the only two points of the data that we'll care about in this video. But as we can see, there's also things like author, tags, and the popularity. So now that we understand the general structure of the data set, we can now proceed to make this data set compatible with GBT Neo. Let's now open the code I prepared for this video. For starters, we'll need to import JSON, ArcParse, OS, NumPy, we'll need Scilearn for the train test split, and we'll need Pandas. Let's scroll down to main and then start looking at the code. So the first thing we do is that by default, we look for quotes.json. If we want to use a different file, we can use the dash F flag to make it load a different file besides quotes.json. Here, we'll do with open JSON file. We'll load the data using the JSON import. Here, we create the category dictionary. The way that the data will be structured once I go through it is that we'll have a key for each category and inside of each key will be a list with many quotes attributed to that category, such as love, etc. So next we have this for loop here, and what this does is that it enumerates throughout the entire data set. What this if statement does is it checks to see if a category is already in the dictionary, so if there's already an entry in for love, for example. And if that is the case, what we're doing is we're loading up that list I mentioned and we're appending a quote to that list. Contrary, if it does not exist, what we do is we create a new list of the quote that we found and we insert a new list into the dictionary. So next, if there's any empty entries, we pop it. This is just uh, cleaning up the data a bit since there is some irregularities inside the JSON file, this is needed. The next thing we do is we print out the keys. Later on, I'll show you what these look like, but these will be all the different categories that we can select and have the AI generate new quotes from. So here we're creating a list. This list will be where we store the final state of our inputs. So now we have this for loop, and what this for loop does is it goes through all the quotes with respect to their key. So first I'll go through all the quotes dealing with love, and then I'll go through all the quotes dealing with funny and things of that nature. So now we have this function create sentences. Let's quickly go up and see what that's doing. So what this function is doing is it's loading all the sentences with respect to the key that we're looping through below, and then it's going through each sentence inside of that list we built earlier. Here we have this if statement, and the reason for this is we're not dealing with completely clean data here. We have these weird occurrences of this character string here. So if this is a thing in the sentence we're currently at, we just don't run this code here and in effect skip it. Here we have one of the most important lines of code for this data set and any data set with GBT-Neo. What we're doing here is we're looping through each sentence and what we're doing is we're building up a new string. We start with end of text, we have our key, so love, a colon, 
the actual quote, the sentence that we're going to be using, and then end of text. Make sure that for this data set and any data set you use with GPT Neo, you have end of text at the beginning and end of text at the end. These are called the BOS and EOS tokens. BOS meaning beginning of sentence and EOS meaning end of sentence. These tokens are important to have because it lets the AI know where it should be looking at for predictions of the next word in a sentence. Since we're dealing with individual quotes, one quote should have no probabilistic impact on the next quote. So having end of text separating the quotes is very important. If we were dealing with paragraphs rather than sentences where one sentence may in fact affect the prediction of the next sentence, we would put these end of text tokens in different places, such as the beginning of a paragraph and end of a paragraph. So using this function here, we gradually build up the entire data set in the proper format. The rest of the code is somewhat simple. First here, we split the data set into a train and test set with a 20% test size. Here, we then make these into data frames. Important to note is that if you're using my fine tuning video to fine tune an AI, you need to make sure that you have this column as text. This will make it so that the output, which is a CSV file, has a column called text. And this is what the fine tuning program will look for. We then drop any NA items if there exists inside of the data frames. And then last but not least, we convert these data frames into CSV files called train and validation. So now if we run this program that we just went over, we should create two files, train.csv and validation.csv. These files will then be able to be used with the fine tuning repo I went over in a previous video. Upon running this program, we will also see what categories are available to use with the AI. So here we can see several of the categories, including life, happiness, love, truth. So these are all categories of quotes that once the AI is trained, we can give it. And if it works well, the quotes generated by the AI will be at least tangentially related to the categories given. Now that we ran the program, we can see we have some new files here. So as I mentioned, here we have end of text, the category that we want, the actual quote, and then we have end of text. And so all of these data entries here are in that format. So as I previously said, these files are now able to be simply dropped into that fine tune repo. And by following the instructions in my previous video it would work just fine. So check that out if you haven't seen that yet and want to fine tune GBT Neo. But at this point, I'm going to go ahead and fine tune GBT Neo and then I'll come back and we can look at some of the results of fine tuning GPT Neo on this data set. So now I'm back with the fine tuned GPT Neo 2.7 billion parameter model on the custom data set we just went over. As a reminder, our options for the quotes are the following life, happiness, and you can read the rest if you want. Let's go ahead though and enter a few examples. So we'll type in love. and we'll have five outputs and let's see what it generates so here we can see some of the outputs and in my opinion they're fairly good you can see love is the beginning of knowing love is not an emotion it's a choice it's a sum of all our wants love is a verb and then like a short story here kind of quote let's try again with life life colon space and again let's do five outputs and here are some of the outputs we see I never dreamed my life would be a book. Do you want to live forever or live in the moment? Uh, for the man who has new peace of mind, his life is a burden. So it's kind of some like life advice quotes. Still pretty cool. So at this point, I think it's safe to say that the outputs of this model are pretty cool. And yet I've barely even scratched the surface of what this model can do. So now at this point, we have created a custom data set. We have fine tuned a model on that data set. And now we are making some unique outputs from this fine-tuned model. So at this point, I'm going to end the video. I hope by watching this video, you have a better understanding on what goes into making a 
custom data set to fine tune these GPT language models on. If you liked the video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. I plan on making more videos related to GPT Neo as well as other videos related to AI and tech in general. So if that's something you are interested in, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day.